If you suffer from pie anxiety, you know, making the dough, trying to get the dough into the pie plate in one piece, crimping it neatly, worrying about it shrinking, well, a fruit galette is a great starter pie. You skip the pie plate and the crimping all together in favor of a free form pie dough that's shaped directly on the baking sheet in a nice rustic shape. In this episode, I'll introduce you to a peach ginger galette that's so easy to handle, you'll be in the pie making groove in no time. A galette dough is very similar to a basic pie dough. All the ingredients will go into a food processor, all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, a little salt, and for this galette, I like flavoring the dough. Sometimes I'll use citrus, uh, other times I'll use spices, but today, since I'm making a ginger peach galette, I'll use some ground ginger goes right in here, tap it in, top goes on, I'm going to pulse a few times just to combine the ingredients, give a tap in case any flour has settled up on the top, and now we're going to add our butter. The butter for the galette dough is very cold, and you can see it's in nice large chunks, we're just going to pop it out over the dough. Lid goes back on and pulse until coarse crumbs form and the butter is in larger chunks, slightly larger than peas for this one. Okay. Now I have ice cold water, it's about a third of a cup, I'm going to drizzle it over the top of the flour mixture and pulse until very moist crumbs form, but they'll still be large and crumbly. Don't want to overprocess at this point. Let's check that out. Ah. So you can see that the dough is very moist. If I squeeze it a little bit, it will hold together really nicely. I'm going to dump the crumbs right into the center of my plastic wrap. Using the plastic wrap to shape the disc instead of my hands prevents the butter from melting any more than it needs to. You can actually see there are still little flecks of butter. That's going to help create a nice flaky and tender crust. Wrap it up and pop it into the fridge to chill. I took my dough out of the refrigerator about 10 minutes ago just so it has a chance to soften up a little bit and be behave a little bit more while I'm rolling it. I'll start out by rolling on parchment paper, which is a technique I like to show beginners. I even use it myself sometimes. And I'll lightly dust the paper with flour. It's just a very thin coating. Dough in the center and give it a little dust. Place a second piece on top. The classic technique is just moving from the center out. And I'm turning a little bit. I don't get too precise in, in where the turn is. The idea is just to roll gently. And you can see the paper starting to buckle. What that means is the dough starting to stick a little bit. So I peel back the paper. Oh, and if I see a big crack like that, I'm just going to pinch it together at this point. I'm going to give it a quick dusting and flip the dough over, a little dusting, and continue rolling. Now where this double parchment paper comes in really handy is once this dough gets a little bit bigger, you can't pick, just pick it up as a disc and flop it over. So I dust one side of it, I slide my hand underneath the galette and the parchment, and then flip it over. My hands are evenly placed above the rolling pin and over the dough, so I'm not going from the sides. I'm over the dough and I'm putting even pressure. I can feel that this end is a little bit thicker. I'll 
take some time to try and level that out. You'll also notice that when I am rolling, I'm not rolling over the edges. If I roll over the edges on that same pressure, the edge will get super thin, and we don't want that. So I just go from the center just to the edge, and then I release the pressure from my hands. We're looking for something that's about 15 inches, so we're going to measure it here, and it's just about right. You can leave it like this and have it nice and rough and rugged looking, very authentic. Or if you want to trim it off, grab a big, huge lid, about 14 inches from your lobster pot, and just use a small paring knife and just cut all the way around. We're going to transfer our galette dough onto the baking sheet. We're going to cover it with one of the pieces of parchment, like this, and a little bit of plastic wrap. And we're going to pop the dough into the fridge while we make up the filling. The great thing about this recipe is it's really versatile. So let's get started with what we're using. We're going to use some brown sugar and cornstarch. Flour will do too, but I like cornstarch in this because it gives the fruit a cleaner flavor and it also is a bit clearer in the, the finish. The juices will be a bit clearer. And of course, a little bit of salt. And we're just going to whisk this up so that no lumps remain in the sugar and the cornstarch is incorporated. I'm going to move over and use a little spatula so I make sure I get all of the little lumps out. In go our peaches, just like that. And for flavoring, I'm going to add a little uh, finely grated fresh ginger, which tastes great with peaches. And to balance out the flavors, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice. We'll really boost up the flavor. And we're going to toss these guys together gently. You don't want to bruise your fruit until the peaches are coated. There we go. When you choose your fruit, make sure it's nice ripe fruit. If your nectarines smell better and are riper than the peaches, use the nectarines. So my galette dough is ready to go. I've taken it out of the fridge and let it warm up just enough so that it's pliable, so that when I fold, it's not going to crack and break. But it's still pretty chilled. And I'm going to take my fruit filling, give it one final toss, and then I'm going to spoon it and pile it into the center, leaving about a three inch wide rim all the way around the outside edge. And I'm just going to use my fingers quickly to just just rearrange a little bit so I don't have any sharp, jagged edges that are going to poke out. Try and make it even. But this way, we're sure that the peaches will all cook together at the same time. Now it's time to start pleating. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to just take maybe three or four big folds, or you can make smaller pleats that are closer together, and you're pressing in slightly so that they stick. Again, nothing needs to be perfect here. And if you need to rearrange the fruit so that you get a better fold, go right ahead. But you can see why, when I'm doing this, it's important to have your dough pliable but still chilled. Otherwise, it would be a big cracked mess. And you can also probably guess why it's a good idea to be using a rimmed baking sheet to bake this galette with. That way, if there are any cracks and juices seep out, it'll seep out on, onto the pan and not onto the floor of your oven. So there you go, and you can kind of push it all in a little bit together, just like that. I like to use a little bit of heavy cream that I brush on the outside. It adds flavor as well as more of a matte finish, making sure we get around the edges. Now I'm going to top this galette with a, it's a mixture of hazelnuts and sugar and a little bit of flour. It's kind of like a hazelnut streusel. Don't worry if some gets on to the peaches or falls onto the baking sheet. That's fine. I'm just going to scoop up some of these errant hazelnuts and sprinkle them over. Now we're ready to bake. Our oven's heated to 425. I'm going to slide the galette into the oven, close her up, and reduce the temperature to 400. If the nut topping is browning faster than the crust, Tent it loosely with some foil. 
and continue baking. So the galette is ready when the crust is golden brown and it smells very fragrant. Wow, a fruit galette is just as beautiful and delicious as a traditional pie. You have your flaky crust, your streusel topping, and your delicious sweetened, thickened fruit filling.